Firth found the statue base bearing Imhotep's name, he died. The quest to find Imhotep's tomb was picked up by the British archaeologist Walter Emery. In 1964, Emery laid siege to the area north of the Steppe Pyramid near Cecil Firth's old excavation site. 400 workers were marshaled. For the first time, a bulldozer was used. Emery's expedition quickly stumbled onto a bizarre find, a vast network of catacombs filled with thousands of neatly stacked clay jars. Inside each jar, Emery found a mummified ibis, a bird sacred to Egyptians, and left to Imhotep as an offering. Emery and his men thought they were closing in on Imhotep's tomb. <laughs> Kafti Sa'ad was 18 years old when he was hired to work on the Emery dig. Today, he remembers what it was like discovering the ibises. It was a great pleasure to find something so important after all that hard work. We had a big celebration, like a wedding. The workers eventually disinterred one and a half million mummified ibises. They went on to find a gallery full of mummified baboons, another animal identified with Imhotep. Then they broke through the baboon gallery and discovered a deep Old Kingdom burial shaft, a chamber dating from the time of Imhotep. When they reached the bottom of the shaft, they found a clay jar bearing the stamp of King Djoser. But that was all. Walter Emery's seven-year search for Imhotep's tomb ended when he died in 1971. Kafti Sa'ad's search for Imhotep continues. Sa'ad now works for Polish archaeologist Karol Mishlewicz in his dig site on the west side of the Steppe Pyramid. Mishlewicz has already unearthed mummies that confirm the site was an active burial place and sacred pilgrimage site for 2,000 years after Imhotep's death. But among the Greco-Roman mummies, Mishlevietz discovered Old Kingdom evidence, a simple wall made of stone, mud bricks, and mud mortar. This construction technique dates the site to the Third Dynasty, the time when Imhotep lived and died. Then, when workers digging next to the wall uncovered brilliant bits of blue tile, Mishlevietz knew he had a rare and exciting clue in the search for Imhotep. For these blue faience tiles have only been found in one place, in the funerary complex of Pharaoh Djoser. So it's quite probable that we may find here the tomb of somebody, an official, who was almost as important as the Pharaoh himself. Could that person be Imhotep. Mishlevietz's team was energized, convinced they would succeed where others had failed. The workers continued to dig eastward towards the steppe pyramid, looking for the entrance to the subterranean parts of the tomb. For months, one after another, new burial shafts were excavated and explored. Then, at the bottom of one of the shafts, they discovered another Third Dynasty wall. When they broke through, they uncovered the facade of a tomb.
When we removed the heap of stones and bricks accumulated in front of the facade of the tomb, we saw the first piece of uh, relief, and there was the hieroglyphic sign P, which also occurs in the name of Imhotep. Mishleviats, like Firth and Emery before him, was standing on the brink of one of the world's greatest archaeological discoveries. After months of clearing rubble and careful conservation, Mishleviats and his team made an amazing discovery. The structure is not a tomb, for it contains no sarcophagus, but rather a rare funerary chapel. The hieroglyphs revealed that the owner is a powerful prime minister or vizier, a previously unknown figure in history with the formal name of Merif Nebeth and the nickname Fefi. The hieroglyph that had tantalized Mishleviets was not from the name Imhotep. He was disappointed. That feeling disappeared as he entered the funerary chapel. The chapel is one of the best preserved ever found. Dating from the end of the fifth dynasty, around 2300 BCE, means Fefi lived about 400 years after Imhotep. Like most funerary murals, the reliefs depict idealized scenes from Fefi's days to come in the afterlife. Days spent hunting, fishing, or enjoying the company of his four wives and girlfriend. But these perfect days of the afterlife will be lived only if the vizier's relatives bring proper offerings to the chapel's two false doors. This was a place where the living was contacting the dead, because priests of uh, funerary cult and family members were bringing here offerings in order to deposit them in front of the false door, where the soul of the dead was supposed to come out in order to collect them. The funerary chapel of Fefi is a spectacular find, the crowning achievement of this season's dig. But just as Mishlidiev and his team are closing up the site, he stumbles upon one more discovery. While securing a previously explored burial shaft, one of Mishleviets' workers discovered a secret corridor. A digital radar measuring device is brought in to find out where the corridor goes and how long it is. Careful not to slip down the 60-foot shaft, Mishleviets' colleague climbs through the hole. The digital measuring device works like radar, sending out waves that reflect off surfaces and bounce back to the transmitter. The instrument measures a distance of 80 meters. That 80 meters means the corridor leads straight to the heart of the step pyramid. This shaft turned out to be the greatest sensation of the present excavation season, not because of the shaft itself, but uh, because uh, of a hole uh, existing in its northern wall. This hole leads to a subterranean gallery which is at least 80 meters long and extends directly toward the Jezer pyramid. If the entrance to this huge tomb uh, 
exists on its eastern side, it must have been just beside the Jezreel pyramid. And the person who was buried here has been someone of the highest stature in Egyptian society. Who knows, maybe Imhotep himself? Michelivitz will have to wait until next dig season to find out. For now, Almost 5,000 years after his death, Imhotep remains elusive. One question haunts his seekers. Will Imhotep's tomb ever be found intact? I really believe that the tomb of Imhotep should be intact. If this tomb will be discovered, and it will, sometime, Sometimes people who are not searching for this, they're looking for discovery of a tomb or temple or something, and they will hit the name Imhotep, written in hieroglyphic. If an archeologist will see that name in one block, he will be the luckiest man on earth. The search for Imhotep will go on. Archaeologists continue their quest for his mummy, and Hollywood continues to invoke his name. Imhotep the man, through his genius and achievements, has attained the greatest goal of all time. He is 